Okay. Our final talk today will be presented by Stefano uh, Posa. Stefano is an assistant pre professor at Charles University. His topic today is a lantern like method for the time audit exponential. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, the organizer, for the really nice job they are doing. And can you hear me, right? Yes. yes? Perfect. Okay. So what I'm going to present um, today is a joint work with Pierre-Louis Giscard. And it is about, as you can see, the approximation of uh, the so-called time order exponential. So here uh, I will start giving you the definition of what I mean with time order exponential. So uh, it's not so complicated in the sense that we have this uh, linear differential equation where our A here is a time dependent square matrix, okay, depending on a time t prime. And uh, U is the solution. And here the notation is a bit confusing, but uh, it's going to be important later. So this is why I'm writing this in this way. T T prime is our variable and T is the initial time, okay? So this is just a differential equation. We have the derivative in T prime here. And then we set U of T, so you can image T equal to zero, for example, equal to the identity. So this is our uh, problem and we want to give an expression for U that is known as time order exponential. So for example, in the nice case in which the matrix A is commuting with itself for uh, all the times in some, in our interval I, uh, this U has a nice expression that can be written in this way. And here you see we have this matrix exponential of the integral of the matrix A. So, uh, and then we can use different kind of, of techniques to approximate something like that. But in general, we don't have an explicit form. And this is the problem we are uh, going to deal with. So uh, what we know is that, uh, for example, you can express it by the Dyson, uh, how, how Dyson did it in 1948, by the time ordering operator. And this is giving the name of this time order the exponential. But this timing ordering expression is, not, is more annotation in the sense that it's very difficult to evaluate. So, this is the problem and uh, applications are you can guess are everywhere in particular we are interested in uh, quantum physics but also they can emerge from differential Riccati matrix equations for example and a uh, method to get an expression for the problem uh, so perturbative methods for example are uh, usually um, you can use floquet based or magnus techniques and these, when the matrix start being very large, as it can be in some application quantum physics, um, um, they can be prohibitively involved. So this is why we are dealing with this problem. And the first result, a new result was given by Pierre-Louis and his collaborators um, to the so-called Patsam decomposition. But also this is a composition that is based on some graph theory can be has a complexity that is too large for real world some of real world applications. So this is the problem we are dealing with, and what we are going to do and present in this uh, today is that how to solve this complexity problem of the path sum approach by using some model reduction technique. And this model reduction is done by what we will call star Lanchus algorithm. So uh, just to the warning, so what I'm going to present is a method that works on a space of generalized functions, so distributions. So I'm not going to talk about a numerical method. Uh, and the reason is that before going towards the numerical methods, we need to develop this expression. And the reason I think it's in nice and important to talk about that in, in this, in, in to a numerically near algebra audience is because there is a really nice connection with fundamental tools of numerical linear algebra that can be just transferred 
in this both complicated framework, but they work very similarly and are, are, uh, they have, uh, in my opinion, a great potential in this sense. So, and the second warning is that since we are using lunches, as may, I think many know, uh, then of course taking into ac account actually approximation and loss of orthogonality in finding precision is important, but we are not going to do it today. Also, there's not enough time to talk about that. So let's uh, introduce what is the general strategy uh, we are going to use. So the point for us is instead of working with uh, 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 something that is just depending on one time, we are actually uh, using two times. So now maybe you can see why I was defining uh, U as something depending on two times. And you can see T prime must be larger than T. So you can always interpret this second time as the starting time of your, um, of, uh, the time of your initial condition. So if A1 and A2 are two square matrices, then we can define this convolution line product that we call star product here uh, in this fashion. And you see we have an integration in tau and tau first is in the second position and then in the first one. And as a result, you end up, and here we are, you have two matrices. So this is the usual matrix matrix product. As a result, you have a new matrix that is depending on two times. So once we have done this, we can define powers of matrices. So pay attention that A star is not the conjugate, uh, the conjugate median of the matrix A, but it is uh, the case power with respect to the star product of the matrix A, okay? And once we define powers, we can also define what is a resolvent for us. So we define this star resolvent of A in this way and you can easily prove that uh, this uh, is convergent as, as uh, when A is bounded for all the times in the interval I. So this star resolvent is important because as it was proved by Giscard et al, um, U, our time order exponential, can be written using this star resolvent in, by this formula. Here, if you want to know the identity is the Dirac delta function, but here we will have to give a larger discussion. So I'm skipping this, uh, this for, for this talk. So what is the, so what we want to do now is approximate the star resolvent instead of U, but to do that is not easy. And actually uh, the path sum uh, method can do that by some complicated graph decomposition. Basically, the idea is that if you look at, at the sparsity pattern of the matrix A and with the associated graph, thinking about A as the agency, adjacency matrix, then you can express the IJ elements of the resolvent as some uh, combination of continued fractions. So here, the complicated point uh, is that if the sparsity pattern of the matrix is uh, complex, then the method is going to be too much uh, demanding to actually give a nice solution. So our goal is to transform the matrix A into a matrix with a really simple structure so that then we can use this part some formulation. And the idea we are following is actually to take a, the easiest matrix we could find in the sense that is T as a three diagonal matrix. So that then we get a really straightforward formulation for its resolvent. And then we want another, of course, property. And that is that IJ element of the star resolvent of A must be equal to, let's say, the first element of the star resolvent of T. But this can be rewritten just using the definition of star resolvent uh, in this way. So we have these uh, star powers of the two matrices must be uh, the same in, in these elements, and these are known, we define them as star moments. So this is what we want to build. And if you are familiar with some similar problem, moment problem, you uh, probably uh, would have, uh, have noticed that uh, in the case in which A is time independent, so in the classical case, this can be done using Lange's algorithm. 
So what we are going to do is using this analogy to solve this problem uh, with respect to this star product. And we will define a luscious line method that is based on a star orthogonalization process. So I will recall uh, the classical case. So the simple one, it's not simple, but it's simpler than the one we are dealing with. And, and so how you can use the non hermitian Lanchus algorithm to uh, approximate an expression like this, where we have uh, the exponen matrix exponential of the matrix A and two uh, vectors. So here I'm just uh, running away from the time dependent problem and just want to approximate a time independent problem like this. And what you can do, for example, is to build two Krilosa spaces and then Defined in this way, and then use the non Hermitian Lanchus to compute two bases for these uh, Kalosa spaces so that they are B orthonormal. So VNH uh, trans, uh, the conjugate transpose of WN times uh, VN is equal to the identity. And once you have done it, if you define a matrix VN that is the projection of the original matrix onto the Kalosa spaces, then you can show that the n is three diagonal. So first property we really want to have, and then has the matching moment property, which means that you can see is really what we want to do, uh, that these powers have the same up to the n minus one, and actually they are the same um, when n is equal the si uh, to the size of uh, a. So you have exactness for all k. So then this justifies the approximation of uh, the exponential of A by the exponential of T. And, uh, and, and this is really what we will like to do in our uh, more complicated framework. So let's try to do that. So we are back to our initial problem. We have a time dependent matrix A. We can formulate the time of the exponential U uh, uh, by the star S solvent. And we are interested in computing the ij element of this u. So now this problem can be generally written in this way, where you have a vector, time independent vector v, w and v um, that are multiply. And here the multiplication is the u common uh, matrix uh, vector multiplication. And you want to approximate this object. So we will do, we do the same. We need to define uh, what are the time dependent Krilosa spaces for us? And to do that, we need, need to define the concept of matrix star polynomial and it's dual. So basically, we have already seen that we can define st um, star powers of the matrix A. So uh, to define a polynomial, basically, we have to just to introduce some co uh, multiplication, star multiplication by some, some coefficients. And for us, coefficients will be distribution depending on two times t prime t, so some scalar distribution. So once you have a polynomial, you can also uh, define the dual uh, polynomial by multiplying by the left and considering the uh, Hermitian transpose. And, and with this definition, it's pretty easy to define what is a Krilosa space, because then you just assume uh, the degree of the polynomial to be uh, smaller than n minus one. So uh, we are not, we don't have enough time to see how to build the star Lanchard process. So I will just uh, show you what are the properties that you can do that and what are the properties and the outputs of this process. So basically through this trans star Lanchard process to this star Lanchard method, you can build uh, if everything, if you don't have work done, we talk about it uh, in a few minutes. Um, you can build two bases for the, the two uh, time dependent Krilosa spaces I have just introduced in the previous slides. Slide. And, uh, and so that they are star B orthonormal. So the star product between these two vectors must be equal to the identity. And here again, the identity is the identity matrix time uh, the Dirac delta function. And um, you can do that. And as, as I said, we don't have time to um, discuss how to build that. But, um, but uh, if you uh, start doing the uh, star to process in the same, same 
uh, same way as you would do with the in, in the in the non-Hermitian line shows algorithm when you build the non-Hermitian line shows algorithm you end up with a couple of three terms recurrences so you see you can build a new w vector using the two previous one and two coefficients alpha and beta and the same for vn with the beta n and alpha n minus one coefficients here we have vn star B beta n it means that to uh, compute vn we need to divide in the sense we need to multiply by the inverse of beta n the star inverse of beta n and here is where much of the difficulties are hidden in this uh, in this problem and and again we have left just uh, less than five minutes so uh, we did a uh, uh, we derive a lot of results about the inverse of this beta n. And in general, we prove that if you're starting with smooth functions on the interval, you won't have problems in, uh, mostly you won't have problems. No, no more than the, you would have with the usual non hermitian line. So um, for the sake of simplicity here, we just assume that it is possible to inverse, uh, to invert, star invert beta n and that's so we have no breakdown in, in the algorithm and we can go on with iterations. So at the end of the process, we can build a three diagonal matrix just uh, made of the coefficients we compute at each iteration. And uh, as you would do with the usual Lanchus uh, techniques, you can actually rewrite the three terms recurrences in this matrix form thanks to, thanks to this three diagonal matrix, which means that Tn can be written in this way. So you see, it is really again a projection with respect to this star uh, product onto the, the time dependent Krilosa spaces we defined before, and we end up with a three diagonal matrix. The analogy is uh, totally the same as with the uh, classical lunches. So, uh, so now we have our three diagonal matrix that was the first property we uh, wanted to build. And, and we also have the second property we wanted to get because we proved that this matrix Tn satisfy a star matching moment property. So the star powers of T and A are matched in this way for k up to 2n minus 1, and in particular, when n is of the size of the matrix A, then the, power, the moments of this, the star moments are the same for every k. And which means to go back to the, our initial problem with this, that this matrix, the star resolvent solvent of A is equal to the star resolvent solvent of T. So we have an expression for A, but why are we doing that? I'll, I'll try to say it again. So T now has the same size of A, but now T is the diagonal. So if we solve our initial problem with uh, the matrix T instead of the matrix A, we end up having uh, an approximation, if you want, of the uh, time of the exponential that now is a star less solvent of Tn and now we can use the path sum method on these three diagonal matrix thanks to its simple structure. And so thanks to that, this can be written in a very simple uh, fashion as a star continued fraction, which is by the way, if you know a bit about the relationship between continued fraction and Lanchus algorithm, it's really the same if, uh, as you would get in that case, if you just rotate the star product with the usual. Anyway, so now we have the expression we were looking for. It's simple, it's just made of n terms and uh, the coefficients are given by the star line shot pro product. And, and this solve uh, the problem we, uh, we were looking, for, we were trying to solve at the beginning. So to give you a more uh, concrete idea of what we have done until now, we, I'll show you an example. So we have a time de de dependent matrix um, where you can see we have some three uh, uh, trigonometric functions and um, some polynomials. This matrix does not commute with itself, so we cannot express 
um, the time order exponential easily. And this is the output of the star Lanchos algorithm. So don't be scared by this theta here and delta. They are heavy side function. It just means that T prime must be larger than T. That was one of the assumption. And delta is again our identity. So uh, as in the definition, we have the identity on the upper diagonal. And you can see all those, the, the other entries are made of combination of three, three chronometric uh, functions and polynomials. That is more, more or less what we would expect from something like that. What is uh, more revealing what the complication of all the process uh, is are the um, Trilosa space basis. So W is quite fine. Again, we just have some polynomials, but V is made of derivative of the Dirac delta function. So uh, you can see that there is much more to say about what we have been doing in these slides, but we don't, I'm really out of time now. So just to summarize, um, Star Lanchos is able to express the solution of our couple linear you know, differential equation with Unkost coefficients. There are several difficulties, many like star inferences, approximation. Nevertheless, it is convergent in a finite number of steps. It expresses the solution with a finite formulation. It admits an expression in terms of simple finite continuous fraction. And such a general approach has been so far out of reach. There are many open issues uh, and things to do, to especially to arrive to um, 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 numerical implementation, a numerical algorithm uh, solving the, the problem by this way. Uh, here you can find all the references and just in the last minute I'm taking, I, I really like to say that we have some open positions to work on this because uh, from January we will start um, a new research project on the Star Lanches that is funded by the Primus Research Program of Charles University. And so I'm looking for a postdoc and two PhD students uh, in the line is in a month, basically. Here you can find all the information and I will be in gather uh, if you want to chat about that later. And that's it all. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you. Uh, we may discuss later on together. Thank you for all the speakers for the excellent uh, talks.